May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! I love Anglicans. And finally, the day has dawned, and the morning is here, and the tomb is empty, and death has no power over us, and love is victorious, and hope lives. Thanks be to God. I am struck this year, because you always have to find something new to say about this year. I am struck this year by how often we talk about holy days, holidays, holy days. But how much of God's most important work happens at night in the darkness? While shepherds were out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night, in that long, dark night that stretched out between a shared meal between friends on Thursday night and an execution on Friday morning. But this, ah, this, this is the night while it was still dark, John says. Mary went and found what had already happened in the night. This is the night we sing in the exalted, or we used to sing in the exalted, and we will sing in the exalted again when we are having something more like a normal year. This is the night, this was the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Alleluia. And there is something important here, I think, about this God who does amazing things through the night, in the dark, while the people to whom these gifts are given are sleeping. I mean, I love Jesus by day. His miracles, his stories, his casting out of demons, bread for 5,000. I love it. But I am in awe of Jesus by night. Jesus, who arrives in this world vulnerable and weak and entirely dependent, born into one of these bodies, that will walk and talk and eat and laugh and ache and sing and pray and weep. Jesus who in that body, beaten and broken, holds on to his dignity, refuses to be shamed as his friends betray him and deny him, as his enemies arrest him and make his trial a mockery of justice. Jesus, who is dead, which is supposed to be the last thing, Jesus, who is dead and yet who destroys death from the inside. And who, when those who love him most come to anoint his body for burial, is nowhere to be found. We use these beautiful metaphors for God and for the presence of God and for the power of God, of light and sun and brightness and dawn, and these are good metaphors, 
I'm really excited that we'll use them next week as new candidates are baptized and they will receive the light of Christ from that Paschal candle that burns now. They are good metaphors that speak of strength and of hope and of truth. But there is also this. This God who does God's most amazing work in the darkness. The God who before there was light said, let there be. And thank God, thank God that our God is a God who is powerful in the darkness because sometimes that's where we are. In confusion, in grief, in fear, in isolation. And it's real, that darkness. It does have power. You know, we know that darkness is real and death is strong. And it is so easy in the dark to get lost to choose a lie over the truth, to choose isolation over connection, to choose ourselves over mutual care, to be led by fear instead of love. But God knows that darkness is real and that death is strong. But our God, who in the darkness before there was light said, let there be our God. And God's love and God's desire for life, for abundant life, is stronger. <clears throat> and there God is, when it matters most, doing God's most amazing work in the darkness before it was dawn. So when we are there in the dark, as we sometimes will be, there is something to hold on to. This hope, this God who is good and great by day, but absolutely astounding in the darkness. We hold on to each other. We hold on to these promises that love is stronger than death, that light shines in the darkness and is not overcome. That this is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. So we hold on, and morning after morning, we choose truth and connection and mutual care and love. And so we wake up not just this morning, but every morning into a world where the chains of death are broken and the tomb is empty and death has no power over us, where shame has no power over us, where love is victorious and forgiveness brings us home and hope lives every morning. Alleluia. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God.